Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and I've got some exciting news to share with you today. We are very proud to release the latest machine in our range from Brother. It's the NV50S computerized sewing machine. It's an exclusive model to Echidna Sewing and it comes in and joins the NV180 which is the sewing and embroidery combination machine within this range. And this is also an exclusive machine to Echidna in Australia. Now, both these models are fantastic value. Um, we do get asked a lot by people though, do we have a sewing only version of this model? And the answer is of course now, yes we do. And that is this NV50S. Now, if you'd like more information on the comparison between these two models, there's a great video uh, on our website. And there's also a fantastic brochure you can download. This has both models on the brochure and a full comparison chart on the back. So you can really get a good idea of what the differences are. Um, as I said, this is a combination sewing and embroidery. This is sewing only. And right now we're going to take a really good close look at the NV50S. Okay, so we're going to take a close look at the NV50S, but first let's have a look at what comes in the box and as standard with the machine. Obviously, uh, the question most people ask is, is there an instruction book? Well, indeed there is. There's a very well-written instruction book and it's very, very clear and precise. Um, it's one way of learning about this machine, but of course there's loads of video tutorials available on how to use this machine. And in fact, most machines in the Brother range. So use this in conjunction with the video tutorials that are available freely online on our website or on our YouTube channel. There's also a little sewing projects booklet that comes with the machine, that's kind of handy. And a quick start guide for doing the basic things like threading the machine. So everyone wants to get into it straight away. So take a look at that because that will get you sewing really quickly. And there's a full accessories list of all the different accessories that come with the machine and the options that are available from Brother as well. So that's in the box. Um, obviously a power lead, of course, and a foot control. So this is an independent foot control, independent to the power lead. So uh, you can choose to use this machine with or without a foot control because it does have a start stop button as well as um, the foot control, as I mentioned. So pop that there. There is a dust cover for the machine. It's always handy to put that on when you're finished. It just keeps dust and contaminants away uh, when you're finished sewing. And also good if you're storing the machine in the cupboard or something, pop that over the, uh, the machine. There's two little accessory pouches that come with the machine. The first one here is all the basic tools. So it's got, you know, spare needles, the thread caps that hold the spools on, a seam ripper um, or a quick unpick rather for uh, cutting buttonholes and just trimming things, a uh, spare needle uh, spool pin holder and a couple of screwdrivers. Generally speaking, just tools that you'll always find handy. And of course, spare needles was, is, as I mentioned. So that comes standard. Perhaps the uh, more important pouch is this one here, and it has the feet and the bobbins that come standard with the machine. So I'm going to just run through what is a standard inclusion. First of all, there's obviously spare bobbins. Now, the great thing about these machines is they use a very standard A-style bobbin and they're available everywhere. They're a larger bobbin uh, than years gone by and so they hold more thread, which is kind of cool. So there's loads of bobbins there. And we'll go through uh, the various feet. This is your buttonhole foot. So this machine has a one-step auto buttonhole or five variations of one-step auto buttonhole. So your buttonholes are definitely covered. If you have buttonholes, you also have a button sewing foot, and this is an advanced button sewing foot, so it's really cool. And yes, it's easier to sew a button on on a machine than by hand, and I can prove that to you. So that's included as standard. It does come with what they call the end foot, or this is actually the applique foot. Some call it the embroidery foot, but I, I like to call it an applique foot. And it has a hollowed out groove underneath for allowing the uh, satin stitching and decorative stitches to flow through nice and smoothly. So that's a standard foot. There's also an overedging or an overlocking foot as well. So uh, that gives you a simulated overlock stitch, um, which is great for edging and, and so on. A zipper foot, which uh, obviously zippers are a big part of our lives, so you always be able to put zippers in. And a blind hem foot. So they're the standard feet that come in the little accessory pouch. And of course, the main foot that you'll use more than anything comes already on the machine, and that's the J foot or the standard straight stitch zigzag foot, which is... Um, really the most commonly used foot. So, so that's the standard accessories that come with the machine. 
Okay, so looking at the machine itself, let's take a close look at just what features it has. The first thing I think that you'll notice is it's a very attractive looking machine. And I think that's important because when you're sitting in front of a sewing machine, you do want to get attached to it. And a machine that looks good is, um, is always a good place to start. You'll notice it has a, uh, a good range of stitches. So it's a 50 stitch machine and that will give you pretty much everything you need. So from straight stitch, zigzag, through to your standard utility stitches, elastic stitches, stretch stitches, a couple of quilting stitches, and um, I, I mentioned before five one-step automatic buttonholes, which is great. It even has an automatic darning stitch, and it's a great machine for sewing on buttons. So within that five, uh, 50 stitches, you've got everything covered. It also features a backlit LCD screen and quite a large one at that. Now, when we say backlit, what that means is that it's bright. So if you're working in a dark room, you don't have to really struggle to see what the screen is telling you. It gives you great information as well. So it tells you what the width and the length of the stitches are. It tells you what stitch you have selected, what foot you should be using and the needle uh, position. So it's a needle down position. You'll also notice at the top here, it has a automatic reinforcement button. So this is a, uh, a, an automatic uh, back tacking button. So it automatically locks off a seam at the start and the end of a, a seam, which is really cool. And a twin needle lock button, which means it limits the, the stitch width for twin needles, which is also great. Choosing stitches is very easy. So all you need to do is turn this dial. It's an electronic dial. So whatever stitch you dial up, if I want stitch number nine, for instance, I just go to number nine on the dial. It sets the width and the length for me to the optimum settings. Now, what that means is, it's going to be pretty right. You very rarely need to adjust this, but I do have full control. If I wanted a narrower stitch or a wider stitch, I can just simply touch that button right out to seven mil. So this is a seven mil zigzag machine. A lot of machines in the lower end of the price range um, are only a five mil width, and that's a bit restricting sometimes. So seven mil is great. And of course your stitch length is very easily adjustable. Again, let the machine do the thinking for you. You really don't have to think too hard about it. If we go to a different stitch, it will automatically reset. If you go ahead and change the stitch functions or the stitch um, settings on a particular stitch and you think, oh, you know what, I'd like to go back to normal, just go off that stitch and reset it back to the stitch you wanted and it will reset that for you. So it is super, super simple. As I mentioned, it tells you what foot to use. So for example, I'm on stitch number 11 and it's telling me to use the G foot, which is the overlocking foot. And the, the feet are all marked with those letters. So stitch selection, super, super easy. Let's move across the machine a little bit. This guy here is your speed slide control. I recommend everyone buying a machine. That's, that's a number one thing to have, particularly if you're learning to sew because, um, if you've ever sewn on a machine that has no speed regulation other than the foot control, when you're doing something intricate or you're learning, it's very easy to get a twitch in your foot and the machine will take off on you and cause you all sorts of mayhem. With this guy here, if I set that down to the lowest setting, no matter how hard I push the foot control, the machine will not go any faster than a slow inching speed. And I'll show you that in a moment. I can take it right up to a full 850 stitches per minute. And that's quite quick. Um, in fact, it's very fast. Most, uh, most machines uh, in, the, in the lower price points don't even get to that speed. So, but you can set that anywhere between a very slow inching speed or slow, slow speed like that to fast at 850 stitches per minute. This button here is the needle up down button. So the machine will always stop with the needle in the down position, which allows you to pivot your work. And that's a really convenient feature. But one touch of a button will take the needle up to the correct up position. And if we push this button and hold it down for three seconds, it will change the machine from stopping with the needle in the down position to the needle in the up position and uh, you'll use that button quite frequently. And what that means is you don't ever need to reach for your hand wheel on the side of the machine. And for learners, if you're just starting out, a very common problem that people do is they play with the hand wheel and it's easy to, to stop the machine with the needle up, but in the wrong position. So when you start sewing, you can easily jam up your machine and cause all sorts of grief. You can't do that on this machine if you use the needle up down button, it will always be in the correct position. And I love that feature. 
This is the uh, this little button here is a lock stitch or a fixed stitch button, and it will actually lock off the stitch. Whenever you push that, it will lock off the stitches for you, so you, it ties off the stitch and it won't unravel. And uh, that's a, a fantastic feature on this machine. This is your soft touch reverse button. So reversing is very simple. Just one push of that button, and it slows down to reverse nice and evenly, and uh, you won't get into any strife reversing too far, too quickly, and uh, causing some mayhem. This is your start stop button. Now. If you, if you don't like the idea of using a foot control, which these days a lot of people don't, they prefer to use the start stop button, you can leave your foot control unplugged and this will give you access to uh, running the machine right at the, your fingertips there. And um, particularly good for anyone who has a, a disability or, or uh, struggles to use a foot control, this solves the problem. You just use your fingers there. The threading path is very simple. I'm going to show you how to thread it in just a moment as we just finish going through the basic um, machine, but it is a one-step threading system or a um, self-threading system. And uh, the last thing we'll just point out is it has a removable accessory tray and that opens out from the top and you can store your accessories in there. But that also then exposes the free arm on the machine and uh, great for tubular works, work cuffs, sleeves, that sort of thing. So very easy to take off. And there is also option, an optional table available for this machine that gives you a nice wide table surface. And uh, you just simply take that off, put the table on, and you've got a really nice flat work surface. So that's a bit of a run through on the machine. We've also, oh, I should point out, bobbin winder up the top there. I'm going to wind a bobbin in just a moment. But that's basically how the machine presents. And um, let's have now, now have a close look at the threading of the machine. Okay, so threading a machine like this is really, really simple. And um, Probably, you know, it's one of the things that most people get a little bit scared of is, you know, threading their, their first sewing machine or a new sewing machine. I will point out that there's some great illustrations on the bed of the machine that come and explain exactly how to thread the machine. The book will tell you how to thread the machine. We have videos on our website that show you how to thread the machine in detail. But um, I'm going to show you just quickly how simple it is. At the moment, I don't have a bobbin in the machine, so I've taken a, a fresh bobbin. I'm going to wind the bobbin first. So my bobbin goes up on the little spindle at the top there. I'm going to use a spool of blue thread here. This is called Resamp. This is my favorite thread, and it's a good quality thread. I do recommend use good quality thread. You know, bad thread, poor thread just gives you problems, and it, it, it's a no-brainer, really. So good quality thread will always make the difference. This machine has a lay-down spool. Now, you'll see a lot of cheaper machines will often only have a spool that sits up like this on the machine, and that means the spindle has to, or the spool has to sit like that. The problem with that is when you are actually stitching, the spool has to turn as well, and the thread often falls down and gets caught around the, the, the spool itself, and that will cause thread breaks and needle breaks. On these machines, it's a lay-down spindle, so you take the little thread cap off, just pop your thread on the lay down or horizontal spindle if you want to call it that. Pop the little cap over to hold the spool on. There are three different sizes of caps that come with the machine, so dependent on the, the size of spool you're using. Now, I'm going to try and keep my hands out the way, but all this is documented very clearly on our website and in the different instructions that we have with the machine. We follow the dotted line up on the top here to thread the bobbin, so I just pop that under there, up and around there. Oops, get back around there. There it is. That's now in the right position. Now, to thread the bobbin, I just wind it around the bobbin a few times like this. And there's a little instruction there telling you just to pop the thread into a little guide there and cut it off. And that's now threaded the bobbin for ready for winding. All we need to do is push the bobbin across. That disengages the sewing mode. And all I've got to do is push the start button now and that will wind the thread for me. Now I don't need to fill this bobbin because I'm just going to use a little bit to show you some of the features, but if I did let it go it would stop automatically once it reaches this little guide here. If we want to stop it because we don't need a full bobbin, just hit the stop button, pop that back across, take the spool off. I've got a pair of scissors here, I'm just going to trim that thread off there. And we've now wound some thread onto the bobbin. Let's put this bobbin into the machine. First thing I'm going to do is just lift the presser foot. The presser foot lift is conveniently located on the inside here. It's nice and easy to get to from either direction. And we have a lovely little grey plate with a little flicky lever just here. I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. And that just pops up. We'll lift that, lift that presser foot again, take that off. Now there is a very clear indicator here and diagram on how to thread the bobbin, but essentially the bobbin drops in from a and runs counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. So we just drop the bobbin in there like that. There's a little slot just here. We just pull the thread into there like so. 
pull it around and then just give it a little pull on the this little blade there. It cuts the thread off. I do not need to draw the bobbin thread. Now this is the Brother Quick Set bobbin system. It's brilliant. It's the same bobbin system they use on their big expensive machines and um, it's, it's virtually jam proof. So you're going to love it. You don't have to draw the bobbin thread up through the needle hole before you start sewing. Can't tell you how good that feature is. Once we've got the bobbin threaded, we just pop this little gray plate back on. Again, I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. I'll just do it from there and that just clips down into place. Now let's show you the magic of the automatic needle threader. So again, our thread is coming through the little um, guide there. This time I'm following the solid line and the numbers one through to seven. So again, all the instructions are in the instruction books and on videos. So we just always make sure the presser foot is in the up position. That applies to every sewing machine. When you're threading a machine, press a foot up. Okay, follow the numbers. So I've come into one, two, three is down here. Four is up in the take-up lever. This little lever that goes up and down is called the take-up lever. You must make sure the thread is in that take-up lever. If you do not and you start sewing, you will jam your machine up. And that doesn't matter what machine you're on, that's what will happen. Five is coming down through here. Six is on the needle bar guide. At this point, I generally just put my finger on the thread back here and give the thread a bit of a pull to make sure it gets into the needle bar guide at number six correctly. Really simple. Up into this little gate just here and there's number seven. So we just push it into number seven. There is a cutter on the side of the machine. I'm just gonna pull that down there. You can't see it at the moment, but trust me, there is. It's a little cutter. That's number eight, in fact. So that's now ready to thread. All I do is put the presser foot down now. I might even just quickly turn this machine around just momentarily. There's a lever here. This is number nine. And all I gotta do is push that and the needle is now threaded. Whoops. So I'm just gonna pull that back around. So um, that's simple. That's, it doesn't get any easier than that. And that advanced needle threader is pretty much exactly the same as you're going to see on the $10,000 machines. Albeit they have an electronic button, you have a lever. That's the only difference. So let's take a look at the sewing functions. So I've already covered the fact that it's got 50 stitches built in and they're all adjustable so you can set the size and the length of them. Um, but we'll dig into the most commonly used stitches. I'm not going to run through all of them because uh, that's something you can do when you get the machine home. Let's have a look at a straight stitch first and how you would actually operate the machine. Now, all you've got to do to choose a stitch is select the stitch you want. Stitch 01, for instance, is probably, well, that's the starting stitch. That's what the machine will start on. And uh, that's telling me to use the J foot, which is the foot that I have on the machine. It's telling me that the stitch length is 2.5 and that there's no zigzag. It's just a straight stitch. If I wanted, and that means that the the, um, J, the number one stitch has the needle in the left hand position. A lot of people will go straight to stitch number three because that gives you the needle in the center position. And uh, that's where we're gonna start on stitch number three. All I've got to do to start sewing is make sure that my thread is, my needle thread is under the foot, out the back, and that just means you're not going to have a, a, a thread sort of um, tail all being sewn up and, and looking a bit messy. So thread under the foot uh, and out the back. I've just got a small piece of fabric here, doubled over. I don't need to draw my bobbin thread. You remember I, I threaded the bobbin and it cut the thread for me and I can leave it there. It won't jam up. I don't need to be fearful of that. So I can leave my bobbin thread where it is. We're just going to pop that foot down. We're on straight stitch. I don't have my foot control plugged in. If I did, I'd be using my foot to control the machine, but I don't, so I'm going to be using the start-stop button. Now, if I turn this uh, right back to, almost back to the uh, slower setting there, and I hit my button, you'll see the machine will start stitching very, very slowly. Um, that is what we call inching speed. If I had my foot control plugged in, no matter how hard I push it, it won't go any faster than that. And I have to say, for people learning to sew, this is a great feature. If we just wanted a sm slightly bit faster, we can just simply move this. But I'm going to stop it right there because I've come to the end of my fabric. At this point, the needle has stopped down. If I wanted to turn a corner, I just lift my foot, turn my fabric around and start sewing down my next seam. I'm going to speed this up a bit now and you'll see that it will be a lot faster this time. I'm going to stop that there. And if I wanted to remove the fabric now, just needle up, lift my foot, take it away. There is a cutter on the side of the machine. I kind of like to use my scissors anyway. I can cut that right back off to the seam there. And there we go. Now, 
At this point, I don't have any reinforcement stitches there. I haven't got any back tacking. So this machine has an automatic back tacking function. And I love this feature. Let's come down this section here. Both threads out the back there. It's this button right here, the auto back tack button. And we click that button. It will now show on the screen that it's switched on. And providing I'm on a stitch that has that function, which is going to be these first few stitches here, I'm on stitch three. Watch what happens. I'm going to slow this down a bit. It will now do three stitches forward and then three stitches back. So it's back tacked. That ties off the start of the seam. Go a little bit faster here. When we get to the end of the seam, to get a back tack at the end of the seam, we just hit the reverse button. It will now go three stitches back, three stitches forward, and that is now locked off the, um, the seam for you. To remove that, we just lift the needle using the button. Remember, I'm not using my hand wheel. Take the fabric out, do a little trim back to the stitch there, and we have a back tack at the start and the finish of the seam. So it's never going to unravel on me. So I love that feature. Really, really cool. Now, let's move along here. You've got zigzags. If you want a zigzag stitch, let's just go to stitch number, we'll go to stitch number eight. It's telling me to still use the J foot. I do still have the back tack function on. So let's have a look at what happens and how you would change your zigzag stitch. Let's hit the go button. It's actually doing a, did a little lock stitch to start with, so that's what the reinforcement does. If I want a wider stitch, I can do it while I'm sewing, right out to seven millimeters wide. And I've reversed back there. I've got a back tack at the end there. Let's take that needle up. You can see I've made the zigzag wider as it was sewing, so that's very simple to do. So you get it right out to a seven mil zigzag. I'm not going to go through all the utility stitches and stretch stitches. There's loads in there, except to say if we go to do a, um, let's go down to one of these uh, decorative stitches. Let's say stitch number 32. Let's, and these are quite nice stitches. Now it's saying to still use the J foot. In fact, we might find one that requires a different foot. Ah, oh, there we go, 34. Actually, we'll get the little uh, eyelet stitch or French knot stitch. This is lovely. It's telling me to use the end foot now. So the end foot is the, it's, no, it's got it written right there. You can't get it wrong. And it's got a hollowed out section underneath. So to change the feet, all we need to do is a little lever on the back of the presser foot shank. You just pop that up, the foot drops off. Now, of course, I didn't trim that thread, so we might just trim that away. So I'm not too messy. And we'll get rid of that. One there and that one there. Now I'll take our end foot, put my J foot back there. The end foot, just, you just drop it under the shank and then once it's in position, you just lower the presser foot down and it will clip into place. Pop my thread back under the foot. And all we need to do now, it's already set. I don't need to set anything. Remember the machine sets all that for you. So just let it do its thing. And let's hit the start button now. We'll speed that right up so it goes a bit quicker. They're a very quiet machine too. They're not, they certainly don't sound like a chaff cutter. And they're very, very powerful. I'm going to show you some of that in a moment. Let's just stop that there. If I hit this little button, it will actually stop at the end of one of those little French knot patterns and that locks it off for us as well. We'll take the needle up now. And there's our fantastic little decorative French knot. If you were using that with uh, a wing needle, it would look quite interesting, and that's another story. We'll leave that for another day. But um, loads of lovely decorative stitches there, and you've just got to follow the instructions on the machine, and it will set everything for you. Okay, let's now take a look at, um, I think we might get in and have a look at how, how well it handles heavy fabrics. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go back to my J foot. So I'll take that end foot off. Put my J foot back on. As you can see, it's really simple. But before I do, I might just point out one of the key features on this machine is it has a seven point feeding system. So the, um, the feeders actually have extra feed teeth over many of the sort of lower price machines in the market. But more importantly, it's what we call a box feed system. And then that essentially means that unlike machines in olden days where the feeding motion was a bit elliptical, this has a really direct box feed. Uh, I won't get to bore you with the details, except to say it will feed better uh, than most of your cheaper machines on the market. So we'll pop this um, this little guy back on. So that's the J foot. Again, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. There we go. Thread under the foot. 
Now, here's a, a little piece of denim, and I've kind of, I've simulated what would be a side seam on a pair of jeans, for instance. And one of the struggles that people have, and I, in fact, I can tell you now there's two, four, six, I think there's eight layers of denim on that side seam. So let's have a look at the needle penetration power to start with. So I'm just going to stitch down that eight layers of denim. I have an extra lift on the foot height as well. So by pushing that lever up, I can get right up to a huge foot height to get virtually any sewing project under there. So I'm just going to stitch down this super heavy bit of denim here. And I'm going to slow the speed right down. And this is really impressive. I am going to go back to stitch number three. And we'll turn our reverse off. We don't need that for the moment. Slower speed, stitch number three. Have a look at this. The needle just glides through there. It's like a hot knife through butter. So there's no issues doing heavy work. There's power to burn on this machine because it's an, an electronically controlled DC motor. So it has full needle penetration power regardless of how fast you're going. That makes it so much easier to sew difficult things like heavy denim. Speed that up a bit. Get to the end of the seam. Let's just stop that. Take that up, and we'll take the fabric out, I'll trim that back because I now want to show you how this box feed system is a huge advantage. So the challenge we have here is stitching from this layer up onto this heavy layer of denim, and that's what you get basically on the side of a pair of jeans, etc. So we're just going to stitch this way. I'm not going to give it any assistance at all. I'm not even going to guide it, I'm just going to let it do its thing. So we'll just start that stitching there, we'll go a little bit faster and let the machine climb up there. Now that's gone right over that without any trouble at all. And that is largely due to the advanced box feed system on these machines. So let's take that up. There's my stitching climbed up there without any problems at all. Now sometimes you'll get certain fabrics where you do need to sort of push and prod a little bit if you, because you could go thicker than this if you like. But um, wow, the feeding system on this is one of the real huge advantages. So. Power to burn, great range of stitches. Let's take a look at the buttonholes. All right, we're going to take a look at buttonholes now. As I mentioned, we have five automatic buttonholes, one-step automatic buttonholes. And for that, we do need to use the buttonhole foot. It's a really simple foot. Let's remove the J foot. Just drop that off, we'll take that away. Now, before I put this on, I've got a four-hole button here, and that's the button I want to use or as my guide to how long I want the buttonhole. So all I need to do is to take this little part here out and the button actually sits in there and gets cradled. It doesn't matter how it's sitting in there as long as it's sitting in there. And that will now allow the machine to measure the right size of the buttonhole for you. So I, what I tell you what I like to do here is I like to reload my bobbin at this point because I've, I've obviously removed my fabric from um, the machine and I've got this long bobbin tail. So I'm just going to take my bobbin out and I'm going to reload it and cut it off again. That way I'm not going to get any errant thread underneath my buttonhole. So it's cut off to a nice, a nice level there. I just take my buttonhole foot and position it under the shank, clip it into place. Now I'll just, um, I'll weave, I'll just weave my machine around a little bit and show you here there's a lever, a buttonhole lever. We just need to pull that down and it sits behind this little guide here. Again, we've got a video showing you how to do buttonholes, so it's a bit more advanced than what I'm showing you here, but this is just to show you the key features of this machine. So my foot is down, I just need to go and choose my buttonhole. I'm going to use a standard square end buttonhole, which is 38, and you just turn the dial until you get to number 38. It's really simple. It's telling me to use the A foot, which is the buttonhole foot. It sets everything else for me. I don't need to worry about anything. Now, typically when you're doing a buttonhole, you'll always be doing it on two layers of fabric at the very least. And a little tip to give you the best, most structured buttonhole, it's a good idea to use a bit of paper or stabilizer. We use embroidery stabilizer, it works great. And you can pop that under the foot. I'm just, I'm just going to pop this under here. Now we would start at the bottom of the buttonhole. So wherever that you've marked your bottom of your buttonhole, that's where you're going to start. And we just need to push this down Drop the foot down rather. I'm not too worried about the thread here. Um, it, I'll cut that off at the end. And all that's left to do now is hit the go button. And I'll speed that up a bit. It reinforces it. You don't need to do anything. It will actually measure everything for you. 
And when it gets back to the end, it will stop, it will lock off the stitch. Three locking stitches. Needle goes up. Remove the, and there's our buttonhole done perfectly. If we have a look at the button, I can take that out of the back of the foot. And there it is. It's the perfect size button for that buttonhole. And that's how easy it is. If we wanted to quickly do a different one, so just for the sake of it, let's pop that back under there. I've taken the button out. We'll pop that back in again. And we will, let's do a keyhole buttonhole. So that's number 41. Again, all we need to do is make sure the foot's in the right position, hit the go button, and let it do its thing. Simple as that. It doesn't get any easier than that for doing buttonholes, right? And with five different styles, you needn't be scared of getting a great result. Locks off. That's it. That's buttonholes done. Let's have a look at sewing on a button. Okay, so we're going to look at how you sew a button on with this machine. Now, most people will go and grab a needle and thread and do that by hand, but I can assure you sewing a button on with this machine is really, really simple, very secure, and really, really quick. And that's because it comes with the little M foot, which is fantastic. It's quite an advanced little button sewing foot. Uh, we've got a really uh, a more in-depth video on showing you how to do this, so you don't need to get too involved in this in this demonstration, but it's just to show you how easy it is. On these machines, they're a drop feed machine. So that is, we can actually drop the feed teeth so they're not engaged. And that's great for sewing on buttons. It's great for free motion quilting and just free motion sewing in general. The little lever at the back, and again, it's on our video that we show, uh, show that in more detail. We just flick that lever to the down position. That's all, I've just moved it, it's all done. Now I'm going to change the foot. So we just drop the current foot, in this case, the J foot off using the little lever at the back. We take the M foot, pop that in under the shank, lower the foot down, that's clipped into place. Now, here's the magic. I'm just gonna stitch this button onto this bit of fabric. It is a four hole button, so it's gonna take two, two runs, but if it was a two hole button, obviously it'd be much easier. And I just position the button where I want it with the four holes lined up nice and square, lift my presser foot, lower my presser foot down directly on top of the, the holes in question. Now, you do need to choose the right stitch. A button sewing is, is a zigzag stitch. So we just go and choose our stitch number seven. Dial that back to number seven. Now we've disengaged the press the feeders, so it's never it's not going to feed anything because they're not going to come up. But we do want to make sure that we've got our button positioned in the right the right position. Your zigzag will automatically default to a 3.5 millimeter width, and that is in almost every instance the right width for a button to be sewn. And the stitch length is irrelevant because the feeders aren't going to come up. So all that's left to do now is put the foot down, but we've got to check that where we've positioned the button is correct and that the needle is actually going to go into the right, or to the correct position of the button itself. So to do that, just gently turn the machine by hand and check that the needle is in fact going into the hole, which it is. I'm really happy with that. All I've got to do now is do about 10 or 15 stitches. Now at that point, if I hit this lock button, two or three times, it will actually place two or three lock stitches into the button itself and lift the needle up. I, this is a four hole button, so I now just need to lift my presser foot, move the button forward just a smidgen, check that the needle is into the right position, which it is. Another 10 or 15 stitches, lock it off two or three stitches, hitting the lock button and needle up remove the button, and I can tell you now, that button is on there really, really well. So we can cut that back to there, and that will last really, really well. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, but buttons fall off, bought clothes all the time. That's because in most instances, almost all instances, buttons are sewn on using a single thread chain stitch in the factory, not a two thread lock stitch. And so uh, this is probably a more secure button then store-bought clothes. So uh, that's sewing on buttons. Pretty easy, isn't it? So that's just quite a few of the, the fantastic features on this Brother NV50S. Remember, this is an exclusive model for Echidna, and uh, we're really, really excited by it. There's a few other things you probably should just be aware of too. As I mentioned right at the start, great looking machine, well featured, good range of stitches, easy to use, but it is a full metal chassis machine as well. So just like 
It's, uh, it's brother machine, the NV180, which is the embroidery and sewing machine combo. Great build quality, super reliable, and uh, it's also backed by a five-year computer and electronics warranty and three-year mechanical warranty from brother, which of course is supported by Echidna. And all the support and help that you could ever want uh, will be available on this machine. Loads of videos on our website to support it as well. And as always, you, you can come and see us or call us or contact us via you know, Facebook Messenger, all the different options we have, email and phone and our 1-800 number to get any support you might need. But um, if you're looking for that first machine, if you're a young person learning to sew, if you have a young child who's looking to sew, this is a great product to, uh, to introduce them with. Uh, to, to, to the wonders of sewing. If you're an advanced sewer and you're just looking for a machine that is a great machine to take to class or travel with, also a fantastic option because of the, the, the great features on it for the, the value for money it represents. And best of all, check out our website for our current specials on it. We always have great deals and great bonuses and all sorts of wonderful things on all the machines we sell. So that's it, folks. I hope you found this uh, video interesting. I hope you like the machine and uh, yeah, happy sewing. Cheers. Cheers.